Well, good morning, my adventurers. How the heck are you on this Saturday, the 4th of March? <clears throat> this vlog, I hope you enjoyed the last reading of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Today I'm going to read a little more from Edgar Allan Poe. And it's another long poem, and I hope I can understand it. It's called O Temporo O Mores. <coughs> Excuse me. O oh, times, O oh, manners, it is my opinion that you are changing sadly your dominion. I meant the reign of matters hath long ceased, for men have none at all, or bad at least. And as for times, although tis said by many, the good old times were far the worst of any. Oh, which sound doctrine I believe each tittle, yet I still think these worse than them a little. Hmm. I guess these poems make you think. This is one of his poems. I've been a-thinking, isn't that the phrase? I like your Yankee words and Yankee ways. I've been a-thinking whether it were best to take things seriously or all in jest. Whether with grim Heraclitus of yore to weep, to weep as he did till his eyes were sore, or rather laugh with him, that queer philosopher, Demetricus, Demet, I can't pronounce that either, Democritus, D E M O D E M O C R I T U S of Thrace, T-H-R-A-C-E, who used to toss over the page of life and grin at the dog years as though he'd say, why, who the devil cares? This is a question which you'll have and withdraw the luckless query from a member's claw. Instead of two sides, Job has nearly eight each fit to furnish forth four hours' debate. What shall be done, I'll lay it on the table, and take up the matter which I am more able. And I, in the meantime, to, ver to prevent all bother, I'll neither laugh with one nor cry with the other. It has T apostrophe other. Nor deal the flat or aspersions foul, but taking one by hand, merely growl. I'll growl, say you, my friend, and pray at what? Why, really, sir, I almost had forgot. But damn it, sir, I deem it with disgrace that things should stare us boldly in the face. The daily strut, the street with bows and scrapes, who would be men by intimidating apes? Intimidating apes. The monkeys make me swear there's something loath. Oh, wait. Who would be men by intimidating apes? I beg your pardon, reader, for the oath. The monkeys make me swear through something loath. Uh, L O T H. But pray be patient, yet a little while will change me as a political do uh, will change me as a politician's do. I'll mend my manners and my measures too. Of all the cities and I've seen no few, for I have traveled, friend, as well as you. I don't remember one upon my soul. But take it generally upon the whole. As members say, they like their logic taken. Be divided, it may chance be shaken. Excuse me, the cat is being a distraction. Oh, that kind of rhymed with what I just said. And this for a neat frisky counter hopper. Here he may reveal to his heart's content, flounce like a fish in his own element. Toss back his fine curls from their forehead fair, 
and hop yoke over counters with Fester's air, and having cheated ladies dance with them, for at a ball, what fair once can escape the pretty little hand that sold her tape, or who so could, so callous refuse, the youth who cut the ribbon for her shoes. One of these fish par excellence the bow. God help me, it has been my lot to know, at least by sight, for I am a timid man, and always keep from laughing if I can, but speak to him, he'll make you such grimace. Lord be the grave exceeds the power of the face. The hearts of all the ladies are with him, their bright eyes on his Tom and Jerry brim. Wonder what he meant by that. And dovetailed coat obtained at cost, while them, those eyes won't turn on anything like men. <clears throat> Just like the raven, this poem is making no sense. His, his voice is musical delight. His form once set becomes a part of sight. In short, his shirt collar, his look, his tone is the bow idea fancied for Adonis. Philosophers have often held dispute as to the seat of thought in men and brute. For that the power of thought attends the latter, my friend the bow hath made a settled matter. In spite of all the dogma, dogmas current in all ages, one settled fact is better than ten sages. For he does think, though I am oft in doubt, if I can tell exactly what about. Ah, yes, this little foot and ankle trim, tis there the seat of reason lies in him. A wise philosopher would shake his head. He then, of course, must shake his foot instead. At me, invention, shall the foot be shaken, Another proof of thought, I am not mistaken, because to his cat's eyes I hold a glass and let him see himself a proper ass. I think he'll take this likeness to himself, but if he won't, he shall a stupid elf, and lest the guessing throw the fools in fits, I close the portrait of, sorry, I goofed. I close the portrait with the name of Pitts. Okay, and that's the end of that poem, O Tempora, O Moors. Next time I will read, there's one to Margaret. And there's one called to Octavia. So the next time I read from Edgar Allan Poe, it'll be um, those ones. I hope you enjoyed the read. Or if you could read along if you want. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Share on your social media. I will be back later with maybe a photo compilation and uh, maybe some more, yeah, more book readings. It's still cold and rainy outside. Well, it's cold anyway. And my computer was giving me trouble again this morning saying I had no, not enough memory to do, to do this vlog, which is crap. I don't know what keeps filling up the memory on my computer. I didn't add anything to it. If anything, I'm taken away from the memory. Anyhow, I hope you have a very good day. Get out there, conquer the world, and stay goofy. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. I really I need support and I need help, and you can do it for free by hitting the subscribe and the like button. Okay, see ya.